Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller film, Insidious, Chapter 2. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a flashback at the Lambert residence in 1986. Here we witness the first meeting between Elise and the Lamberts, the mother Lorraine and her young son, Josh. Lorraine has contacted Carl and Elise to look into the increasingly eerie occurrences surrounding her son. Lorraine shows them seemingly normal photos of her son, except for a mysterious dark figure in the background of every one of them. She even saved the best photo for last, where a ghostly hand from the black figure appeared to reach out to Josh. Finally, Elise asks to meet the boy. The scene cuts to a video camera footage of Josh looking rather confused in the center of the frame, while Elise is off camera, asking him about his weird experiences. When Josh mentions that he has scary dreams sometimes, Elise's eyes twinkle with interest. Josh is still in the middle of the video camera footage. He is getting sleepier, but only because his eyes are shut, and Elise is hypnotizing him. By exploring the young boy's deep unconsciousness under the supervision of his mother, Elise tries to find this mysterious dark woman who visits the boy in his sleep, and somehow makes appearances in his photos. The investigation breaks when Elise is attacked by the mysterious figure hiding in a dark closet. Sporting a deep gash in her inner arm, Elise reports her conclusion to a deeply worried Lorraine, perhaps unsettled. Elise explains that Josh possesses the special ability to travel to a different dimension in his sleep. We later find out that this is called astral projection. She further explains that his nocturnal explorations have landed him in the crosshairs of a malevolent spirit, a parasite. Before Elise and Lorraine can even finalize an action plan to save the boy from his ghostly stalker, Josh stands up and offers to show them something. It's a little unsettling because he is still hypnotized, with his eyes firmly shut, yet he is able to confidently walk about the darkened room as if fully seeing clearly. With a flair for overdramatic, he simply points to a room from across the hall, and the door slowly opens. For some reason, the adults are panicked at this sight, not at the bloody encounter that Elise just had alone in one of the rooms upstairs, and it can be seen that the doors are slowly opening. Deeply horrified about what was happening, Lorraine takes her son Josh by his shoulders, and leads him to the other room, away from the unseen intrusion. The worried mother begs Elise to do whatever she can, to make the boy forget this awful ability of astral projection, and keep him from making any more late-night excursions into the unknown. It is now the present day. It is revealed that Elise has died. A police detective is questioning Renai Lambert, the woman who found Elise's dead body, about what she saw that night. The Renai that was talking to the detective, is actually the present-day wife of the same Josh that was introduced in the flashback. With a story piece the story together from the detective's questioning, is revealed that Elise died at the house of the now-adult Josh. Josh recently contacted Elise about doing another hypnotism session with his own family. The scene cuts to the night in question. Only this time, the shock comes from the ghastly appearance of a lifeless Elise, and Renai shrieks, upon the discovery of Elise's lifeless body. Renai is followed by the now adult Josh, who desperately tries to shake Elise back to life, but it's too late. The police detective concedes to Renai's wild story of supernatural hauntings and ghostly apparitions, at least for the meantime while the detective collects evidence to prove whether the sinister marks found on Elise were from Josh's own hands. While the investigation continues, the young Lamberts, married couple Josh and Renai with their children, move back to the original Lambert house we saw in the first flashback. Josh's mother still lives in this house. It was not long after that the Lamberts began to experience strange occurrences again. At first, the strange happenings were minor disturbances, like the piano playing by itself, or baby chairs making noises or moving on their own. But as time went on, they eventually got worse. It reaches a tipping point, when Lorraine finds her grandson sleepwalking. At first, it seems oddly familiar. Her suspicions are confirmed when the grandson, still asleep, tells her that someone is behind her. To her surprise, she sees a lady in the bathroom, where she is mysteriously locked in. The deeply worrisome strange happenings take a turn for the worst, when Renai starts experiencing her own strange encounters with the mysterious dark woman. She finds a woman in a Victorian dress, talking to her baby through a speaker. She rushes to her baby's rescue, only to be locked out of the room. Then she hears gruesome noises from the other side of the door. When it finally opens, she finds her baby crying on the floor. Deeply bothered and frustrated by the frequent strange occurrences, Renai confronts Josh to talk about what has been happening since the night of Elise's death. Josh calms her down from her panic, by assuring her everything is finally back to normal, 
after he and Elisa's final excursion to the Dark Dimension to rescue Lorraine's grandson. Lorraine, meanwhile, is still troubled by the strange happenings, and connecting the dots to what happened to Josh in the past. She contacts the paranormal investigators, who were part of the team that Elise formed in the past. The two paranormal experts, who worked closely with Elise, might be able to uncover what could be happening this time. The investigators failed to find the answers. However, they float the idea that perhaps Carl, Elise's partner in 1986, could offer some help. Carl returns and listens to Lorraine's story. They resolve to contact Elise on the other side through a simple Q&A session using a word dice. They play a version of 21 questions, and arrive at the conclusion that the same dark lady that used to follow Josh in 1986, killed Elise. And they will find out more about the dark lady in the abandoned hospital, Our Lady of Angels. Things begin clicking for Lorraine at this point as she puts it together, since she used to work at the Our Lady of Angels Hospital in 1986, the very same time when Josh's childhood troubles began. And we see present-day Josh as he finds his wife lying unconscious on the floor. Unknown to him, she has suffered from another encounter with a dark woman. At first, he scrambles to help her, but strangely, his demeanor abruptly changes. Meanwhile, Lorraine and the paranormal investigators visit the abandoned Our Lady of Angels Hospital. They find the old ICU room Lorraine used to work at, and where all these shenanigans began. This scene flashbacks to 1986 again, when younger Lorraine takes her son with her to work, looking after patients. And an incident with a patient named Parker, scars the mother and son duo for life. The first traumatic encounter happens, when the supposedly unconscious Parker suddenly grabs Josh by the shoulders, frightening the boy. Then Parker torments Lorraine, by suddenly appearing next to her around the hospital after he dies. At this moment the scene gets back to the present day, Josh is acting super weird, and talking to an unseen malevolent voice in the bathroom. And suddenly, Renai regains consciousness, screaming. The couple gets into another heated argument, about all the unexplainable events that have been happening. Their arguing is interrupted by a mysterious piano tune in the other room. The quarreling couple investigates, and Renai recognizes the tune as a melody she composed for her loving husband. However, the supposedly loving Josh doesn't seem to have any recollection of this happening in the past, while Renai and Josh deal with their own troubles at home, Lorraine and her paranormal team investigate Parker further. They find his home address on old patient records, and subsequently visit it. To no one's surprise, the house is also abandoned. With absolute confidence and a lot of courage, the two paranormal experts venture upstairs and somehow locate Parker's old room with flashlights and camera equipment. Inside, a talking doll greets and tells them that they will be assassinated if her owner sees them. That evening, it's the grandson's turn to experience something creepy. He is woken from his sleep by a strange voice. He gets up from bed, and sees a multitude of scary-looking women clustering around him. His screaming stops when his mother, Renai, finally comes to rescue him from the attack of his blanket. Maybe it was a nightmare. It probably wasn't. Back at the piano room, Josh is acting even weirder. He sits in a dark corner, clutching a baseball bat, talking to himself. He talks about his home being in the shadows now. When he gets up to leave, he is finally revealed the real Josh is trapped in some alternate dimension, screaming for help. Over at the abandoned Crane household, Carl takes out his trusty word dice to talk to Elise again. Only this time, he and Lorraine realize they've been duped. It wasn't Elise talking to them from the other side. It was Parker's mother all along. Then, she finally introduces herself as Mater Mortis. Still determined to make sense of it all, Lorraine and her paranormal investigation team enter a secret room in the Crane home. They discover rows upon rows of corpses, underneath white sheets and newspaper clippings about a certain serial killer donning a black wedding dress. Finally, Carl, who is a medium, puts his gift to good use, and investigates the black wedding dress, using his abilities. He pieces all the clues together, and gets to the bottom of Parker's psychosis. He murdered all these women at the behest of his own mother, Mater Mortis. Now that Lorraine and her paranormal investigator team have a deeper understanding of Parker and his mother's past, they rush home to deal with the crazy lady who tries to possess Josh this time, to continue her sick, murderous streak. The next morning, Lorraine runs into Renai outside. Knowing what she knows about the evil spirit that is possessing Josh, Lorraine tells Renai that she and her children are in danger, and rushes them off the house, presumably to seek safety elsewhere, far from murderous, possessed Josh. Carl ventures into the house to try and confront the possessed Josh, but things go awry, and Josh ends up stabbing Carl in a scuffle. 
When the two paranormal experts rush inside the house to rescue Carl, a fight ensues. The two paranormal experts end up unconscious on the floor after being attacked by Josh, too. The newly dead Carl's spirit ends up in the shadow dimension with Josh's evicted spirit, and they hatch a new plan to get the real Josh's spirit back into his human body to end the evil possession. They also look for dead Elise's spirit for help. Carl's spirit and Josh's spirit explore the shadow's realm further and find themselves at this dimension's version of Josh's own house. Here they find Elise's spirit, as it again saves the Lambert family from another demonic attack from the other realm. Elise's spirit gives Josh's spirit further assistance in the alternate dimension, with helpful advice on how to draw out the insidious spirit from his human vessel. She instructs him to go back to Mater Mortis's house, and use her memories to draw her wickedness out. Lorraine and Renai return to the family home, and are subsequently attacked by evil Josh in the real world. The Lambert children arrive right in the nick of time to temporarily subdue the evil Josh, and run to temporary safety in the basement. A trio of spirits in the Shadows Realm continues trying to find the key to drawing out Mater Mortis's spirit from Josh's human vessel. They eventually find Parker's room in this alternate dimension, and bear witness to the young Parker's abuse from his mother. Back at the Lambert home, Renai and her children remain cooped in the basement, while the rampaging evil Josh tries to enter by force. Then, Lorraine's grandson attempts to venture into the Shadows Realm to help his real father, Josh. Renai tries to fight off the evil Josh, to keep the sleeping grandson safe, over at the Shadow's Realm, Josh's spirit fights off the ghost of Mrs. Crane. Just at the right moment, the ghost of the young Parker appears to Elisa's spirit, to help her fight off his evil mother to save Josh's spirit. We are lulled into a false sense of calm, thinking the Lambert family's troubles are finally over, with the defeat of Mater Mortis both in the Shadow's Realm and the real world. Finally, the wickedness dark memories of the ghost of Mrs. Crane, Parker's spirit, is finally free. Now, the race for Josh's spirit and Carl's spirit to return to the real dimension is on, but the disorienting surroundings of the Shadow Realm confuses the two. Just as their lucks would have it, they find the grandson's spirit with a guide to find a way out and make their way back into the real world. Finally, against all odds, in the real realm, the grandson and his father Josh wake with a start. It's the real spirits that return to their human vessels. An emotional reunion ensues for the Lamberts, the movie ends with Carl, back to his old self, once again doing the forgetting hypnosis for the Lamberts. This time it's both Josh and his son, who forget astral projection to avoid further entanglements in the Shadow's realm. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.